Um, I, I do not at all consider myself to be uh, an expert um, on prayer, but it is something that I've, uh, the Lord's really worked in my heart over the years on trying to develop uh, a more serious prayer life. Uh, my testimony, some of you know, is I grew up in a Christian home, so it was, uh, it was a great advantage in many, many ways. My parents were both saved uh, before I was born, and uh, they just were growing Christians, and so I grew up in a household that prayed. Uh, we prayed for our meals, and we went to church prayer meetings, and I just kind of grew up doing that stuff. So my comfort level with prayer was pretty high. Um, but then when things really started to go wrong in my life, and I started to experience like real, real loss and real heartbreak, I discovered pretty quickly that a lot of my prayer was just real formal. It was really just, I, I kind of learned the right things to say, and I would just say those things. And at some point, I kind of realized I didn't really mean a lot of that stuff that I was saying. And so so I got broken all the way back down to like, you know, like okay, I don't even know how to talk to God. I don't even know what I'm doing. And then out of that process, the Lord has built back up um, a much more genuine um, prayer life, a much more vibrant prayer life. So I'm excited to, if I can, try to be helpful uh, to you today. There's no be a mistake to say there's just like one way to pray. There, there for sure is not. Um, it's it's communication. So we're going to talk about about that. We'll give you a couple of principles, and then we'll get you off into your small into your personal uh, private prayer time. But I'm just going to open with a word of prayer. So if you just join me in prayer. Father, we just want to bow our heads, God, and just again say thank you for today, for this opportunity that we have to get together, to consider this subject of prayer. Lord, um, you know this is an overwhelming thing for me to look out at this room of people and just, uh, God, I'm very aware of how tremendously inadequate I am to this task. And God, we know that you have invited us to pray. You've invited us to come and to speak with you. And that's a, an incredible privilege. So Lord, we want, to, we want to grow in this area. We want to, all of us together, we want to get better at it. So we pray that you would help us, that you would be our teacher, that you'd use these Bible verses in these next few moments we have together to stretch us and expand us in this area. God, thank you that you want to hear from us. And I, I don't think we will ever, ever get over the fact that you would want to hear from us. Help us not to miss this opportunity and this privilege that we have. And we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, your pastor is incurable, and so you have an outline to fill blanks in. Um, and if you if you have pens or whatever, uh, you can. You got those. You got that little church notebook. So you got a pen. Uh, you can use that notebook to uh, take prayer requests in, to jot down other thoughts that you have. Some of the kids are doodling in them. That's totally fine. Like that's just our gift to you. We just wanted to give you a little something and tell you how glad we are that you made that for us. So let's start with the real basics, the most fundamental question, which is, uh, what is prayer? What is it? It's a good question. Um, some of you already know the answer to this. If you don't, the answer is that, that prayer is communication with God. It's, it's, it's talking to the Lord. And so uh, sometimes, uh, I think you get it, some people, especially if you've grown up around religion, you get some weird ideas about prayer. You know, the Bible doesn't say, actually, that you're supposed to fold your hands, that you're supposed to bow your head or close your eyes. A lot of us learn to do that in Sunday school. But the reason we do that in Sunday school is so the other kids don't poke each other. <laughs> it's not it's not, a, it's not a Bible thing that, that you need to do that. Now, often in the Bible, you will see when people are praying, they will bow their heads out of sort of a, a reverence or an awe or respect or a sense of oh, being overwhelmed with the presence of God. It's perfectly biblical to do that. It's also perfectly biblical to look straight up at the sky, to pray while you're driving. Any place you could talk to another person, uh, you can talk to God. And, and when you, if you really believe that, that God can hear you when you pray, it'll change the way you pray. That was one of the things that I, that I learned about myself, was that I was praying like nobody was really listening. And, and it really changed my prayer life when I started to like, actually like, internalize this idea that there was somebody listening to me while I talked. How many of you have noticed it's different, the way that you talk, when you are expecting somebody's going to listen and have a response to what you're saying. Yeah. It's different. And if you'll grab a hold of that idea, you, you are halfway there on praying, like for real. Something I suggest sometimes to brand new Christians when they're learning to pray is instead of folding your hands and closing your eyes when you pray, that you ought to hold your hand <clears throat> up to your head like you're on the telephone. That th this, this, this could change the way that you pray. Or if you got your phone out, if you imagine, if you imagine that you could call God 
Spoiler alert, you can. But if you imagine that you could call God, and, and you, you, you would talk to somebody on the phone a little bit different than sometimes we pray, and, and that is generally a mistake. Now, God is high, and he is holy, and he is great, and he is awesome, and approaching him with a certain amount of holy fear is a good idea. Uh, the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So I, I am not advocating, per se, a flippant approach to God here. What I'm telling you is you ought to talk like he can hear you. And, and that, that, like, if you'll get a hold, if that's the only idea you walk out of here today with, I think that'll help you a lot. Um, so prayer, prayer is communication with God. Um, consider that you're talking to him over the telephone. And, and see what that, if you're struggling with the idea of prayer, try that. Just try it. That's my suggestion to use your pastor today, is give that a shot and see what that does. Uh, next question we want to talk about, why, why should we bother? As I mentioned, um, Pastor Farouk is going to have a little bit of a deeper dive on this in his breakout session. But... Sometimes this is a question that I get too. Maybe some of you have wondered, okay, so God already knows everything, which that's true. The Bible says that. And God is a sovereign God. He's, he can do whatever it is that he wants to do. He doesn't need our advice. He doesn't need our counsel. God's not in heaven wringing his hands waiting for us to weigh in. You all know that that's true? So, so the question becomes, well, why, why, why should I pray? Um, and so I want to give you some help with that just quickly here, uh, first of all, this afternoon. The first thing is, it's true that we're not giving God information. And that's a liberating thing. When you realize that you're not praying to give God information about what's going on, that will save you a lot of wasted time in praying. Now, I, this is a trap that I fell into also, where it's kind of like grocery list sort of prayers, where I was like reading God the grocery list, like my wife would do to me sometimes, like, okay, I'm in the bread section. What do I get next? Right? And she's like, go find the one in the blue bag. Like, okay. You know, because she knows he's got to use colors and shapes with me if I'm going to come home with the right thing. Yeah. But, but God, God doesn't need us to give him the grocery list of prayer. The, the reason we're praying is not to just read God the names and the items that are on our prayer list. He already knows all of that. And that's helpful. That'll save you a bunch of wasted time in prayer. Uh, the second thing is we're not giving God orders. I still try. <laughs> still try. I know it's wrong. I just feel like I, to, to avoid being a hypocrite, I need to warn you <laughs> that I'm not good at this. But, but we're not giving God orders. God, because, because God is a sovereign king, because God is the ruler of everything, because God knows what's best and he knows what's right, God's going to do what's right. So we're not, we're not telling him, get, get God, get your act together, here's what you need to do. Oh, I have prayed exactly that prayer. But, that, but that's... that's if that's where you're at with God, you should be honestly communicating with him. That's, you, you, there's no point in lying to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, but past that, as we try to grow in our prayer lives, we need to realize, okay, it's not information. It's not giving orders. So if that's what it's not, then, then what is it? Um, number one, talking builds your relationship. No, no relationship can be healthy um, without two-way communication. Um, any, any relationship that you stop talking to somebody um, some of these, you can go a long time without talking and you kind of pick back up where you left off. But the longer you don't talk, the more and more you're not on the same page, the further and further apart you're going to grow. That's, that's the way relationships work. That's the way your relationship with God is going to work. That regular open line of communication is, is absolutely essential for a growing relationship with God. Now, God speaks to us primarily through the Bible. I, I do sometimes, when I'm, when I'm praying, I felt God impress things upon my heart. I felt God's leading in certain directions. I have never heard the audible voice of God. God has never been, Josh. <laughs> now, God can do that. He's done that in the Bible. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, that's not my experience. I've never had that happen. God's, when God speaks, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like my Bible. It sounds like a pastor preaching the Bible to me. That's, that's how God speaks. And so it's very important to read your Bible. It's important to come to church and hear the preaching. But when do you talk to God? Because for it to be healthy, it has to go both ways. Mm -hmm. Secondly, God is willing to do some things if someone would ask him. Amen. So um, we believe that God is sovereign, that, he, that he's absolutely in charge. But, but that does not mean that God is a puppet master that is puppeteering everything that happens in the world. And so that God has given us the ability to make decisions, and, and God recognizes those decisions. It changes. The things you and I decide to do or not do affects the real world. And, and one of those things that's interesting that God has done is there are things that God is willing to do that he will not do 
unless somebody asks him. And, and that's, that is a mind-blowing concept. It's hard to understand it. Uh, in James chapter 4, verse 2, the, the, Bible, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. I don't have to tell you about that other than the Bible says that God, if you would ask, God would say yes. And he's waiting for somebody to ask him. That, is it God going to say yes to everything? Absolutely not. Again, we're not giving him orders. But you never know. Just, and the example I always use, the way I understand it, is just with my kids. There are things I'm willing to do for them if they would ask me, but I'm not just going to come do it for I'm not just going to show up with ice cream. Now they come and they've been reasonably behaved that day, like, hey, Dad, you have some ice cream? And be like, yeah, ice cream sounds awesome. Right? But, but they're going to have to ask. That makes sense? And that's, there's problems with that. But broadly, that's as near as I can tell how it works. Um, why pray? There's peace from being heard. I found this over and over in my life to be absolutely true. Even when God says no, I appreciate that he listened. You ever have that in your life? You ever, anyone ever worked at a job where they won't even listen to your suggestion? Yeah? That's no fun, is it? There, 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 is, there is a blessing when somebody will like hear you all the way out and then smile and go, no, we're not going to do anything. <laughs> but at least you're like, okay, well, I got hurt. Like, there, there, there's something to be saying for, for getting hurt, especially for getting hurt by God. There, there, there really is, uh, I'm just telling you, firsthand experience, there's peace from being hurt. Secondly, or whatever I'm going to run to, fourthly, maybe, um, there's an opportunity to lay your burdens down. I'm one of those people, maybe some of you will identify with this. I'm a doer. I don't mind getting out and pushing. If, if, if the thing's out of gas, then okay, well, let's just get behind the bus and push. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, my problem is I rely on, that's my go-to. Before I even try to turn the key, I'm out behind the bus pushing. It's way more fun to drive a car than push it. And sometimes, and that's the thing, when, when you go to God, when you remember to go to God and pray about things, there are some things that I'm burdened about I can do nothing about. Like, I, I get all worked up and anxious about stuff I see on the news or take the situation in Ukraine and you know what? I get sad and depressed and discouraged and overwhelmed. I had to quit Facebook because I couldn't handle it. Like I just physically couldn't handle it. It was wiping me out. Because there's all this stuff I couldn't do anything about. But I'm like trying to carry all this weight. I'm like, I'm like taking responsibility for all this awful stuff in the world. But when you pray, you can say to God, God, would you do something about this? And you say, well, now I've asked God. And if God's not going to do it, then maybe I shouldn't be trying to either. And there's this incredible lifting of weight that can come if you actually lay a burden down and say, okay, God, I've asked you, and now I trust you to do or not do or whatever it is. And now it's God's responsibility and not yours. I've done my part. I've asked him. I've done my part. I've asked him. And now it's up to God. Uh, it's important to say thank you. One of the reasons that we pray is because it's important to say thank you. This is a pet peeve of mine um, with uh, kids, the cousins come over to the house, the neighbor kids come over to the house, and I, I, I like to spoil the kids. They, I make special drinks. I have all these elaborate juices and whipped cream and cherries and the fancy straws. You come to my house, I'll make you an elaborate special drink. It's fine. And I have fancy glasses. We mix it all together, and it's super fun. I love to do it for the kids, but when they just like suck it down and then run back outside the to go play, I get a little irritated. So I'm like, come back here, you ungrateful wretch. <laughs> You will say thank you to me, or next time I'm just going to put the whipped cream straight into my mouth while you watch. <laughs> now the good news is God is a much nicer person than your master. But, but it is important to say thank you. Uh, one of the things that the, the book of Romans warns us about, I mentioned this last Sunday, when, when gratitude, when a spirit of thankfulness goes out of a culture, uh, that culture is on its way out. That, that, that is the death of an entire society. It's the death of families. It's the death of friends. It's really easy to say thank you. It's less work to say thank you than to make the special drink. It is less work for you to say thank you to God than it is for God to do whatever, whatever prayers he's answered, whatever things he's done. Christian, it's really important that we be in the habit of saying thank you. Um, and then why pray? Because we gain the heavenly point of view. We gain a heavenly perspective. Um, I rarely change God's mind on anything, but when I pray, God frequently changes my mind. When, when, I, when I sit down to pray, when I bow my head in prayer, I often start with a very certain point of view, a very specific outlook on things. By the time I'm done, I find that my attitude has changed, that the way I look at things has changed. 
And so that's a very cool part of prayer, is to get a more heavenly um, point of view. So would you agree with me that that has a lot of really good reasons to pray? Yes. There's a lot of good reasons to pray. It's not, it's not to give God information. It's not to give him instructions, but a lot there are a lot of benefits for it. Okay, i got to keep moving. There's a number of different types of prayer. Let me just read Philippians 4. It's there on your handout. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be careful for nothing. Now, don't be filled with care. Don't be filled with anxiety or worry. Don't be, don't be care, filled with care. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's a pretty good deal. It says, hey, instead of being filled with worry, why don't you talk to God about it? And then once you talk to God about it, then the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. And so that's that's pretty exciting stuff. Okay, the different types of prayer, uh, they're, they're, we can break this up in so many different ways. There's not a Bible first for this. This is just the way I broke it up. The first kind of prayer is what I call regular devotional prayer. Uh, Daniel's a good example of this. The Bible's filled with examples of this. So people... Uh, followers of God who just had regular time set aside during the day, during the week, where that was their time when they prayed. Um, I've got a number of these on my schedule that I just, I know, I know that on Monday morning, I'm going to be in my office in the morning, I'm going to be praying. I know that every morning as I do my devotions, I'm having just a short time of prayer. After Pastor Farouk's message um, a couple of Wednesdays ago, uh, I've started, I've started in the morning when I wake up, first thing before I got out of bed, I just start making a list of things I'm grateful for, even before my feet hit the floor. That's been a huge blessing these last two weeks, just laying there and being grateful and just saying thank you to God before I get up. But I regularly schedule times. Every Saturday night, I know I'm going to be praying with the church family for a Saturday prayer meeting. Um, I have these regular times that I'm praying, and that's really good. I want to help you with how to do a regular devotional time. The second kind of prayer is what I call constant conversational prayer. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Elder John talked about that on a Wednesday night, too. Christian, we ought to just basically have the line of communication open with God all the time. Uh, a way to think about this, uh, for my wife and I, we have date night every Tuesday, pretty much, is, is date night. We go out and spend a couple hours together. It's concentrated time. We, got, we, we work through all kinds of different stuff on, on date night. That is not the only time I talk to Heather. <laughs> she would be, if she tried to talk to me, and I was like, it's not Tuesday. Get away from me, woman. Like that, yeah, see, exactly. Um, so so what, what is it? This is not, these are not elaborate prayers. I don't say amen at the end. I don't start with our Father, which art in heaven. I don't start that way. Sometimes it's just like, help me, Lord. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's the whole prayer. That's it. Sometimes it's just like, oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Like, that was awesome. Right? That's it. That's the entire thing. There, there's, it's not formal, it's just there's the lines of communication with God are just sort of open all the time. Because I need something, or I'm grateful for something, or somebody comes and they have this need, or I remember one of you. A lot of the praying I do for all of you is in the car. I don't text in the car. I mostly don't listen to the radio in the car. I pray in the car. Because it's great, because things will come to my mind, and so I just, I'm just talking to God while, while I'm driving. And kind of driving, at least a little bit. <laughs> Uh, teamwork prayer is the third kind of prayer. Teamwork prayer, that's when you're getting together with other people to do it. We'll talk more about that in the next session, so I don't want to belabor that here. But that can include praying with your church family. We see that enormously in the life of the early church. They got together to pray. They prayed together for the needs of each other and for the needs of the church. You can also be praying together with your family, with your spouse, or your kids. So, you know, we, we pray together for dinner. Um, we do our thank you prayers um, at night before we go to bed. I we pray in bed with Hugo. Uh, Jan actually mostly does that. Grandma Jan. Um, but it, when she's not there, or the other night she had to leave, the, when the power went out, the pump died, and she was gone, I went in to put Hugo to bed. He's like, I didn't get to pray with Grandma, so you have to pray with me. Like, okay, but let's do that. But those sorts of teamwork prayers are, are a little bit of a different thing. They're really powerful. And then the last kind is desperate need prayers. Uh, some people, this is the only time they pray, and that, that's, if, if that's it, that's okay. Hopefully we're going to stretch you a little bit here this weekend um, on desperate need prayers, um, but that's when something's, something's really gone wrong. For you, for somebody that you love, something's really gone wrong. Um, that can include just the, what we call groaning prayers. Romans 8.26 says that um, sometimes the needs that we are experiencing, we don't know how to articulate them even. And so there's just, it's just like a groaning sound that we make. We don't even know how to pray. 
But the really cool thing in Romans, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit can translate those groaning prayers yeah, to the Father. And so that's, that's a really comforting thing to know that some, sometimes some of the prayers that I pray in the hospital and at home and late at night, they don't, they don't, they don't sound like words. They're, they sound like whimpering or like, and the good news is the Holy Spirit says, oh, I know what that means. And he can translate those things up to, up to the Father for us. So that's a desperate need kind of prayer. Uh, sometimes there's desperate need group prayers. We see that in Acts 12 when Peter went to jail. Uh, they put him in prison. They were fixing to kill him. And the whole church was gathered together at somebody's house. Uh, not the whole church, but a big group of people gathered together at someone's house. And they were just praying for Peter's release. They were praying for God to release him. They weren't praying with very much faith. Because when God released him and Peter came and knocked on the gate, he said, hey, I'm here. And they were like, no, you're not. <laughs> now, the girl runs up. You got to go read it. It's one of the, it's one of the more hilarious parts of the Bible. The girl, the girl that answers the gate sees that it's Peter, leads him outside, runs upstairs to tell everybody Peter's here. And they're like, you saw a ghost. Like, and God, would you please release Peter? Peter's here. No, he's not. It's a ghost. It's, it's hilarious. I love it. But God answered. God, God answered those prayers and released Peter. So group group prayer is really good when you have an urgent need. Um, and then the prayer closet. Uh, Pastor Jeannie will be talking about that in his session. If you want a little help. With, okay, what does it mean to go into your closet and pray? Jesus said, be careful about just praying in groups. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Jesus said, if you really want to get your prayers answered, go home in your closet in secret where nobody can see you except your father and talk to him there. And then the God who sees in secret will answer your prayer openly. And so that's that's a, that's a cool thing to realize that, that God wants to talk just to you. And sometimes it's easier to just be honest and transparent. I try to be pretty transparent as a pastor. Uh, I am really putting some effort into that. But I want to tell you, I do not pray in front of you the way I pray when nobody else is around. Right. When nobody else is around, then I, I don't have to worry. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty non-judgmental group. Like, good for you guys. It's like, that's good. But we're still a little judgmental. You can say amen to that. Do we all know that about ourselves? It's just true, right? We all know that about ourselves. We're kind of like, the prayer closet's really good. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you a template for prayer. I know that I, I got started a little bit late in my defense. How am I doing? B minus. He graded himself. A plus. <laughs> yeah, I heard an A plus. I'll take it. Okay. So I'm going to give you a template for now. This is regular devotional prayer. So um, I don't believe there's really a, any kind of a model for desperate prayer or for that constant sort of communication prayer. But sometimes when you're trying to like schedule some prayer, you say, hey, I want to I want to have a regular prayer time. Whether it's part of your devotions or it's just a day a week, you're going to set aside some extra time to pray. Um, it might be helpful, uh, if you're new to this, to have some sort of a template, some kind of a model to follow. Um, and so I want to give you a little bit of an idea on that. There, there's a number of models like that we can see in the Bible. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus took them out and he just started praying with them. It's one of the reasons why we're going to do some group prayer today. Some of you have asked me already, why are we doing these small group prayers? And the answer to that is, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus didn't give them a sermon. He took them aside and he started praying with them. And so there's really is something that can be gained from when, you, when you're learning to pray, of going with some other people and just, and just praying. So we're going to be doing that later. So Jesus is praying, you know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Many of you are familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Really, a disciples' prayer, but but that's that's a it's a template. You're not. I don't believe God ever intended us to pray those words because it turns into vain repetition. It turns into recitate, uh, just reciting words that you don't mean. The idea is that it's a model. It kind of gives you a framework for it. And so I want to give you a little bit of a framework. Uh, this is just from my personal experience. Lots of different Bible verses, but obviously I'm just moving very quickly here right now. But uh, it starts out with an opening. Um, in general, you ought to address your prayers to the Father. Like, like when Jesus taught us to pray, mostly that's how he did it. He started out with the Father. Now, the Trinity is a mind-blowing concept. Good luck figuring it out. If you say that you have, I am skeptical. <laughs> I don't think that you really have. Um, but broadly, that's like sort of the authority, sort of chain of command within the Godhead is prayers to the Father. It is entirely appropriate to pray to Jesus. We see people pray to Jesus in the Bible. It's entirely appropriate to pray to the Holy Spirit. We see that in the scriptures also. I do that some, like if I'm really, if I'm really messed up <laughs> and I'm really looking for mercy, I just go straight to Jesus. <laughs> it's like, 
Jesus, <laughs> I'm going to need some help. <laughs> right? But broadly speaking, um, prayers addressed to the Father. The next thing I always do is thanksgiving. I would encourage you to do this also. Uh, Philippians says, let your request be made known with thanksgiving. If you'll start your prayers before you ask God for anything, if you've been coming to church here, you notice this is the way I pray, like on Sunday mornings, or if you come to the Saturday prayer meeting, you've heard me pray. I start my prayers out by listing a few things I'm grateful for first. Now, this is my regular devotional prayer. When I'm doing desperate prayers, I don't start with things I'm grateful for. You want to know why? When I'm in that place, I usually can't think of any. Now, that's bad, because I have just as much to be grateful for but I don't feel that way, and it's just super dishonest to bow my head and go, like, God, you've been so good, and thank you for all these nice things you've done for me. And I don't mean any of that when I'm down in the dumpers, right? So I don't start there in desperate prayer. I'm talking regular devotional prayer. I think as a, as a general model, start, start with thanksgiving. It really makes the next step even easier. The next step is to align with God's will. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, pray like this. Um, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? The, 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 the most powerful prayers are the ones where we're praying the way that we're praying according to God's will. Rather than praying according to our will, to pray according to his will. And that's, that's tricky. It is very, very difficult to try to align ourselves with God's will. Part of the reason you're praying is because something's not going the way that you think it ought to be going, right? Yeah. So this is a very difficult step. But I, I have personally found that if I start with Thanksgiving first, if I start by remembering all the ways God's been good to me, I remember all those answered prayers he's done, all these blessings he's given me, then it makes it easier to say, God, let's do things your way, right. and actually mean it. Yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? So then, so then the, next, the next part of prayer is like, okay, God, you know what's best. I'm still going to ask you for some things because they seem like best to me. But God, I, I know that you really do know what's best. And so, Lord, would you even help me try to pray according to your will? That's, that's a good next step in okay, your devotional prayer. Then ask for your needs. So you can kind of see what I'm trying to communicate here is, because this is not a ritualistic thing, but if you'll start by, so you see, you're talking to God like, get your phone out. Hey, God, it's me. Right? Before I ask you for anything, I just want to say thank you yeah. for everything that you've done. Yeah. Thank you for these specific things. And I know that you're going to do what's right. I know you're going to do what's best. But i got some things to ask you for. And then, and then you start asking. Does that make sense? And then that list can be as long or as short. That's, the bulk of your prayer time often will be there. Although I'll tell you this. I've gone to pray to God for some heavy needs, and I never got past the Thanksgiving part. Yep. I got going on the Thanksgiving, and by the time I was done with all my Thanksgiving, I was like, I just trusted him. I got up with just peace, just burdens lifted. So I was like, okay, prayer time over. And, that's, and that, that's pretty good when that happens too. But if not, ask for the needs when you get there. Then when you're closing, um, I want to encourage you to express genuine faith towards the close of your prayers. God, um, so in the book of James, it says that when we ask God for things, we have to ask him in faith. Believing that he heard, believing that he's going to answer our prayers. Now, answer your prayers does not mean do what you say. Because sometimes the answer to your prayer is no. And that's, and that's for our benefit also. That's hard. But so we, we want to start with acknowledging that God knows better than we do. And you want to end by saying, God, I believe that you heard me. I believe that you're going to do what's right. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you for letting me come and just complain. Whatever it is, that, that expression of faith might be weak at the end. Sometimes for me it is. Especially in those desperate prayers, but even in my devotional prayers. Sometimes the most I can muster in that moment it's just, God, thank you for listening. Because that's at that point, that's all I, I'm not sure he's going to do anything. I really, I wish I could just tell you that every time I pray, I'm just confident God's going to do something. But I'm often not. But, but I, what I can say at the end of my prayers is like, okay, thank, thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me this chance to come and just kind of mouth off a little bit. So whatever, whatever that is, whatever's genuine, express that at the end of your the end of your prayer, and then amen is a Christian thing to say. You'll see that over and 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 over again in the Bible. Uh, when Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh, literally that's amen, amen, I say unto thee. Um, and so it's amen is one of those really cool Christian words. You can go anywhere in the world, no matter what language they speak. You can say, you can say Maranatha, you can say hallelujah, and you can say amen. 
And whatever language they speak, Christians will know what that means. Um, and if you don't know what it means, let me help you. It means so be it or it's true. Um, so that's why it's appropriate to say in preaching, people, when we see that in the Bible and somebody's preaching, they, they're preaching, they have a really good point. You go, amen. Like, that's true. I've offered my wife $5 or she'll yell, that's in the Bible. And she has not taken me up on it. But, uh, <laughs> that's a 100% true story. Um, but but so amen is a very Christian expression. It means so be it. Um, or, and so at the end of our prayers, when you've expressed that faith, like God, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for spending this time with me. Amen. So it's like oh, everything I just said, God, that, that that's true. Um, amen. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So. Ah. 